are in the Richter Eruption. I'm Jared Ware, and it's not officially 2013 until we record an episode of PTR, so here it is for you. Part of the Richter Eruption, I'm Dan Charis. Just going to throw this out there because it's not a topic. Governor of Pennsylvania, idiot. I don't know where that's coming from. Yeah, they're, but suing, they're suing the NCAA oh, yeah, yeah, over right, Penn right. State's allegations. Yeah, they just don't want that money going to other states. But it's 2013. We're getting into it. we got sports topics here. we got a, a bunch of NFL topics as we're getting getting ready for Wild Card Weekend coming up. ND Bama, so we're going to hit them all. Big topics this week. Let's start 2013 the proper way with some good sports debate. Let's get to the first topic. So first topic of this 2013 spectacular <laughs> episode of PTR. What was your favorite sports memory of 2012? Well, my, I'm going to throw my, my memory... Just the memory. We're going to go, the biggest sports memory, not my favorite. I'll give you okay, a favorite. Okay. Later. Biggest sports memory, Patriots lose the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Look, Tom Brady was going to be the best quarterback ever. Bill mm -hmm. Belichick, the best coach ever. If they could just win that one game. Now, maybe they'll win the Super Bowl this year. and We, yeah. can, we can say that about 2013. But that was my biggest story. Favorite sports memory in 2013, or 2012, excuse me. Happens once every four years. It's the Olympics. Jared. No, that's a good answer. The, the Olympics were fantastic. I'm going to go back a little farther earlier this year, going across the pond, final weekend of the English Premier League. I'm watching Man City QPR. QPR, one of the worst teams in the league. Man City trying to win the title for the first time since 1970-something. I think it was 76. Comes down to, to extra time. Man City's down one, up a man. So it's 11, 11 against 10. QPR, the worst team. So you think they're going to get killed. They had the one-goal lead. Man City scores two goals in the last last five minutes of the game. Ian Dark loses his mind. Another great call from Ian Dark. Oh, Just when, when don't tremendous. you get great calls from Ian? And one of the best sports moments I've ever seen live, the energy, the excitement, they storm the field, which you don't ever see. The fans storm oh, the yeah, field? Oh, yeah, it was unbelievable. That. Oh, um, it was that's great. pandemonium. And then QPR was excited because they didn't get relegated, so they were pumped. They lost, yeah. but it was like, well, we're who not going the, down. Who was their captain that was a big-time Joey man. Barton elbowed Joey the Barton. guy in the face, got yeah. sent off, yes. scored a goal. Amanda, great, great game, great memory, uh, great the, call. The Olympics, awesome. I mean, both of these events happened in England. I mean, we're going yeah, across no, the we're pond going across for both, the of, pond these. For both of these. It's crazy. And also, the USA-Canada game was in yep. Manchester, different stadium. Yep. Uh, that was at Old Trafford. Not whatever Manchester The Etihad. Okay. Nice name. All right. Well, I, I mean, I mean, I I, I got to wait till 2016 for another yeah. great Olympics. Uh, I guess yeah. about a little over a year from now we get the Winter Olympics, but they are so far so worse than the uh, Summer Olympics. Even though I still love them. Yeah. All right. What do we got for our next topic? Time for prediction time. January 2nd today, but we got 363 more days ahead of us in 2013. Time for a prediction, Jared. What do you what, bold prediction? What do you what are you gonna throw out? Bold here? sports prediction. In 2013, this is this is difficult. Okay. You got to think because you got some sports finishing up. You're gonna get more. You're gonna get more NFL NFL or NFL action. My bold prediction for 2013. I don't know how bold this is. I think it's pretty bold. Jadavian Clowney wins the Heisman Trophy 2013. It'll be around December 8th to probably the 12th range when they hand it up. Not sure exactly the date. Had that huge hit yesterday. People were losing their minds. It was fantastic. But he's gonna be unbelievable next year. Great defensive end. He's going to be the number one pick in the NFL draft the following spring. This is going to be the year of Jadeveon Clowney. We, everyone's going to lose their mind over this guy. I like where he has that. A good, bold prediction. My bold prediction when we made these graphics yesterday was that this is going to be Bill Belichick's final season in 2013. But now, every, that. now everyone is saying that. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to switch it up. I'm going Serena Slam. We're going to get Serena wow. Williams. Cool. It's not even – she's going to win Australia I'm going because she's won Wimbledon. Then the Olympics in between. The this Olympics. could this could go wrong three weeks from now. We this, could be this sitting could be, here. This could be by the great time. One predictions. Come on. By the time the first semester gets started at, or the second, the spring semester gets started, this, that could be ruined. It already. could be. It could be. But I believe in Serena because she is just dominant. She's been one Wimbledon, yep. one at Wimbledon in the Olympics, just torched people. Yep. Torch goes yep. to the U.S. Open, wins that. That was a great prediction I had on the first episode of season two. Yep. And now she's got time to heal because she's, she's a little older, you know. Coming back, loves Australia. She's won there a few times. Going to go to Australia, going to kick butt again. All these girls are going to be like, I can't compete with Serena. A few months down the road, she's going to go to the French. Not a great place for the Americans, especially the men. But even the females, too. Yeah, she, struggles. On clay. she struggles. But I'm going to go Serena on clay. She's just riding the momentum. Serena slam. 
That, that's bold. That's really bold. You think that's bold? That's really bold. Yours is, yours is pretty bold, too. I do not think she'll complete the Serena Slam because injuries, that's the only... She's, she that's gets injured. Big, if she gets hurt... She's known to throw in a tantrum or two. That's going to that's gonna ruin, that's just going to ruin her momentum. Then she's going to have to come back from the injury. So it's going to be tough for her to stay healthy. She's got to stay healthy for eight months. She's healthy going months. into 2013. She's going to say eight, eight to nine months. No, no, no. no. Serena healthy. Slam is she's going to win four majors in a row. It's not going to be a slam all throughout the whole year. It actually still yeah, could that, be. A Serena Slam. She won two last year in a row. Now she's oh. going to win two this year. It's like the Tiger Slam. Oh, yeah. That's all right. That's not as bold as yeah. I thought you were going to say she no, was going to win the next all four this no, year. No, no. She still could do that. Like, she's probably my favorite to win yeah. those tournaments also. The U.S. Open and Wimbledon. It's bold. It, less bold it's than tough, what I It's tough because I, I had I'll, my bold I'll prediction you set, and now it's it's been I'll tossed around. I'll give you that. I'll allow it. Okay. What do you got for our next topic, Tom? So we're heading to the NFL here. Black Monday a few days ago. Coaches getting fired left, right, and center. What's the best available head coaching gig in the NFL right now? All right, Jared. To me, it's a no-brainer. You're going to the NFC North, and you're going to Midway. Chicago Bears. Okay. Look, this team, two, three years, two years ago, hosted the NFC title game, lost. Last year, we're having a great season. Turns out Jay Cutler gets hurt. In comes Caleb Haney. Blows. This year, had a good year. Yeah, 10 and wins. And then they just, 10 wins usually gets in the playoffs, and then they just couldn't get it done. I mean, they were 8-1, and 10-6 and six is what they finished. So they got pieces. They've got a great defense, not as good as last year, but still a very good defense. Any yeah. coach will take that defense. you got a, a, a decent quarterback, Jay Cutler, pretty good quarterback. If they can just get an offensive line, the team will be in the playoffs next year. And this coach is just walking into a, a nice situation in Chicago. I don't see how any of these other positions are, are any good. Kansas City is awful. Buffalo is going to be awful. Uh, who, who are some other gigs? The Cleveland's. Cleveland's awful. Okay, yeah. Who you got? I think a lot of people are saying that Chicago job is really the, the best opening. I have my questions about Chicago. Uh, I think their offense is all right. Their offensive line is horrendous right now. You got no offensive line. And it's, it's been horrendous like, for like three years. It's not like they need one or two, one or two guys on the line. They probably need to replace four guys on that offensive line to be anywhere near relevant in that sense. Get the running game going, protect Jay Cutler, keep him healthy, keep him upright. And that defense, it's getting old, and I don't think that defense was as good as most people. It, there's a lot of times where people just go Chicago, and this is the case with the Ravens as well. Chicago, Baltimore, great defense. They don't ever watch them play. They don't ever look at it. Yeah, you know, yeah. Just great defense. I, I think both teams' defense this year, pretty average. I think no, Chicago, no, Chicago had an above-average defense. When they I, were winning I, games, they got a pick six every week. I, I had him as my defense. They were getting aging, 20 points a week. Aging defense, obviously Charles Tillman is great. Aging defense, I think they lack some talent in the secondary outside of Tillman. I think there's a lot of work to be done in Chicago. I really like Arizona. No quarterback whatsoever, but I think the rest of their team, pretty solid. The running back situation, not that great, but you have two good receivers. And as you know, this Arizona team made a Super Bowl just a few years ago basically by just throwing the ball deep to Larry Fitzgerald. To get a guy who can consistently complete the ball, complete passes to Larry Fitzgerald, My, Michael Floyd will be better. He had a good week 17. He should be getting better next year in his second year. I think their defense, pretty good defense, legitimate defense. Patrick Peterson, one of the best defensive backs in the NFL, one of the best kick returners, punt returners in the NFL. A lot of talent in Arizona lacking at the quarterback position. If oh, you can figure out the quarterback just, just position. Just atrocious. Maybe you find a journeyman veteran who's just able to get you like 250 passing yards a game, one touchdown, no interceptions. You're able to run the football. Maybe you find a guy in the draft, which you'll be able to do. You'll find a running back. Yeah, yeah. If anywhere, I mean, Alfred Morris was yeah, a six-round six round pick, so you can find great running backs. Brandon Bolden was undrafted. So I don't think I don't think Arizona's that far away. I don't think they're that far away. No, all right. I can Quarter, see a it. decent quarterback. I can see where your head's at. They were four and zero this year. Decent Kevin, piece. the Kevin Cobb signing. Has to go down as one of the top five worst free agents. Well, they're going to bring back Andy Reid, and he's going to revive his career. That's that his, is true. That's his pitch. Well, he's going to get interviewed by Kansas City first. Yeah. All right, what do we got for our next topic, Tom? You. All right, so, Jared, we're going to break down every NFL yep. matchup. we got Wild Card Weekend coming up this Saturday, starting Saturday. First game, same as last year on Wild Card Saturday. It's Bengals at the Texans, three versus the six. Marvin Lewis versus Gary Kubiak. Andy Dalton versus Matt Shaw. I think a lot of people... Who you got winning? I think a lot of people are on Houston in this game. I had Houston in the Super Bowl dating all the way back to our NFL preview episode of PTR. But as, I, as I've watched this Houston team the last few weeks, been exposed, 
not playing great defense, <laughs> not getting their offense going. I like Cincinnati to travel into Houston, run the rock effectively, couple play Benji. action passes to A.J. Green, momentum killers, really silence that crowd, get A.J. Green into it. Opportunistic defense, good defense. Let's, let's give Cincinnati good, good defense. They'll make a play. Matt Schaub, can he come up clutch in a big moment? Remember, he didn't play in that playoffs. That no, he did not. Year. It was T.J. Yates. It like was. Cincinnati to figure it out, get a win here. All right, uh, I'm going to go a little a little off base from what you just said, and I can't trust Cincinnati at all. They've made three playoffs in the Marvin Lewis tenure, and they've stunk it up every game. They've won back-to-back games, though, riding a two-game win streak. Oh, right big now. Maybe more than that. I know they won't. they've won their last okay. two. Okay, no, they, they were pretty good. Cause they, they were like, what are they, 10-6 and six now? And they were, I'm pretty sure they were like, Three and five yeah. at one point. You need so to get the ball good. to eighteen. That's the key. Get the ball to. Okay. Yes. Uh, but I'm gonna go. I can't trust Marvin Lewis. I just cannot do okay. it. I don't think the guy's the second longest tenured coach yeah, in the NFL. That's now. unbelievable. To hear really, that. really crazy. Yeah. Belichick's now first. Reed was first. Yeah. So I just, I just think the home crowd, the defense is gonna come out to play for the Houston Texans, and Matt Schaub's gonna have a decent day. Andy Dalton's gonna have a little bit of an off day. A couple picks here. A couple picks there. Okay. So I'm just I'm just gonna go Houston. Houston Jonas fell off the map. One yeah, seed the awful. entire year. Awful now that the three seed the entire season. Confidence not in a good place right now if you're in Houston, especially the quarterback. Shot has not looked good the last yep. four weeks. Yep. He's gonna have to figure it out. But or Foster, so. Aaron Foster played great last year yeah. in this playoff game. I yep. expect him to do the same. Two Big touchdowns. Geno Atkins getting after Shaw. This is gonna be an interesting game. Two touchdowns for Foster. That's probably a good call. Yeah, I think so. All right, let's head to the next playoff game. We'll go to the NFC wild card here. Looking at Minnesota, Green Bay. These teams played last week. Obviously, Adrian Peterson came up nine yards short of the record. Got the win, though. Got into the playoffs. Blair Walsh field goal wins it for him. Who do you got in this one? Well, the Green Bay defense has not been a tremendous defense since Green Bay's been good. But it's not going to happen again for you, Minnesota. I mean, I picked Minnesota this year to have two wins. Yeah, you ten. And it was on the legs of Adrian Peterson. Look, if Minnesota wants to win this game, they're going to have to do what they did last week and just hand it off to Peterson every single yeah. play. Because he had, what, like 200 yards last week? Yeah, he had just under 200. All right, so yeah, just under he 200. 199, he 199. Need, all right, so he needs something a day similar to that. And this week, six days later, because Christian Ponder is not going to get it done for you, folks. He is a guy who played his college football in Florida State, warm weather, comes up dome. Now he's going outside the frozen tundra. Hopefully it'll be snowing. Hopefully it'll be icy. The fans will be into it. The cheeseheads. That's not good. Ponder. For the, that's not good for the Packers though. Ponder. You is, want good passing weather if you're the Packers. That is true, but Rogers can sling it. He can also run it. So I'm Ponder's. Ponder's out of it. That guy's not gonna. He needs to throw for at least 200 yards, which I can't even think he's gonna do that. So I'm going. Green Bay wins this one. You made some points in there about Adrian Peterson having to have a great, great game against this poor Green Bay run defense. Well, these, these, these teams played twice this year. First matchup, Adrian Peterson had 200-plus yards. Second matchup, he had 199, 199 yards just this weekend. I'm pretty sure he's going to get about a buck 70-plus in this game again. He's going to get it about 30-plus times. 30 plus times. 30-plus times. Like you said, maybe if you get some good weather. I don't know what the forecast is. You just need either. to stop that Rodgers passing attack. And I like some of the throws that Christian Ponder's made the last few weeks. Recently married, maybe that's helping him play a little better. Made that great deep ball throw late in that game. Moved them into the red zone. Ended up scoring a touchdown there. And that was another solid throw to score that go-ahead touchdown. Like the way Christian that Ponder's played. That ball could easily been picked. Put it in the perfect spot All for right. Michael Jenkins to go get it. Wasn't picked, scored a touchdown, win the game. Like the way he's been playing. I like Minnesota to go in, compete. Going to end up losing this game. Made a good case for Minnesota. Okay, yeah, you, you really End of the day, Minnesota they're going to lose by... Uh, it's going to be a field goal game, though. Close game, field goal, right. late separates these How two about teams. David but that's on the foot of Mason Crosby, who... Who's been he's suspect. Either gonna, he's either going to make it or miss by about 65 yards to the left. Yes, and, and how about... It's just a little tidbit. How about Billy Cundiff being brought into San Francisco to yeah. challenge David Akers now? Just crazy. That's I, that's not the guy I would think you would want to push anyone because he's going to miss in a clutch, clutch situation, but... Made a great mid case for Minnesota, but yeah. give me okay. Green Bay. Okay. By three. 37-34. So we got our next game right here. We're going back to the AFC. It's Indianapolis against Baltimore. Baltimore's falling off a little bit. Indy seems to just keep on winning. Who you got, Jared? I love Indianapolis in this game. Okay. Don't think Baltimore is that good. 
tough at home, so it's going to be tougher in Indianapolis. But this Indianapolis team, 11-win football team. I think you look at this Indianapolis team, and a lot of people think they won a lot of games, but I think most people on the street would say, oh, they were probably 9-7, and 8-8. Eight and eight. And 11 and 5. It's a really good football team. Young stars. Andrew Luck played unbelievably well last week. Made a couple great throws in that game against Houston. He's going to have to play well. Has to limit his turnovers. Cannot turn the ball over against the Ravens. The offense will click. Flacco's way better at home than he is on the road. Need to stop the run. I think Indianapolis, though, emotions. And I don't want to be the guy who keeps beating that emotion drum, but I think they're going to come out, play really well. I had Indianapolis. Kind of shocking the world and getting a road playoff win under Andrew Luck. I like the way this Colts team is playing. Uh, well, I'm going to go opposite of what you just said, Dan. I'm going to go Ravens. I know they've lost 4-5, or five, and Joe Flacco isn't a great quarterback. But I think they're going to win this game because Andrew Luck, he's going to face a defense yeah. that's going to be inspired. I mean, Ray Lewis just announced today he's going to be retiring after this season. These guys are going to want to play for Ray Lewis. And I think the defense... Is going to come up with a great game. I don't think Indy's scoring more than 10 points. How's that? Is How's that, that for a bold prediction that's of 2013? Really bold. Yeah, I think they're going to score more than 10 well, points. Well, I mean, Reggie Wayne doesn't catch any touchdowns, and the number two wide receiver is a rookie. T.Y. Hilton down the slot. Yeah, Kill well, you. well, also, Allen, the Ravens' Fulton defense Fulton. is also better than the awful Texans' defense that we saw last week when it was three on one coverage against T.Y. Hilton. Uh, so I'm going to go Baltimore here. Uh, that's the simple reason right there. I mean, okay. I just, I, and I like how they're at home. I, I can't. Like Indy. I don't, I don't like Indy on the road, I guess. I love Indy on the road. Okay. Well, I like Indy at home. Like Indy on the road. Like them everywhere. Great team. Great okay. young team. Like them in the Super Bowl? I would love RG3, Andrew Luck. I said that on the show. Love that Super Bowl matchup. So whatever. Just about everyone else in the world. Next topic. So we got last playoff game to break down here on Wild Card Weekend. Seahawks have to travel across the country to take Cross on it. RG3. Washington got the win last week against Dallas. Rookie versus rookie. Oh yeah, who you got? Uh, so this one's this one's a, a little bit of a toss up. So I looked at the quarterback matchup and I looked at Russell Wilson and I looked at Robert Griffin and I liked what I saw from both of yeah. these guys. So I'm gonna cross those guys out. Yep. Running backs. It's gonna be Alfred Morris versus Marshawn Lynch. I'm giving the edge to Marshawn Lynch because did you see that guy two yeah. years ago against the Saints uh, in the playoffs? If if he's got he's the edge, a, he's if he's got the edge slightly. He, it's a slight edge, but second he's, he's and got, third, he's got third top playoff, runners in the he's league. He's got playoff experience, and you can trust him in the playoffs. So I'm going to give this. I'll give it a slight edge, and I'm going to go Marshawn Lynch. Defense. I don't even know who has a better defense, but I know that the Patriots should have. Eh, they had very well could have beat the Seahawks and the Redskins. The Patriots put up like 35 points against them last year. So I don't know much about these defenses. So I'm going to go down to the head coaches, Pete Carroll. Versus Mike Shanahan, this is where I got uh, Redskins winning this game because I can't trust Pete Carroll. I can't believe he beat the Patriots. Just cannot believe it. The guy is just ah, I, I can't explain it. Good college coach in the NFLs. I can't I can't believe that he's doing any good. So I'm going Mike Shanahan, the two time Super Bowl champ. A lot of people with bag Kyle Shanahan. A lot of people are. A lot of people in this area. He made it to the playoffs, two out, the to the playoffs years. two out of the last three years. Pretty One good. year they had the worst record ever, but you can't blame them. They won the division. Made it. So great defense. Shanahan, this is going to be before Kyle Shanahan gets his head coaching gig. Kyle Shanahan's going to coach this offense up. Wins the game at home. So the Redskins would be playing in my playoff project projections. They're going to go down to Atlanta. I think uh, looking at Seattle, I, I, I just want to point out a lot of people bagging on Pete. Two out of the last few years, been in the playoffs, built this team to Another the point where... Another fact that I'm going to make is that Seattle's awful on the road. Next next year, if I'm buying stock, want to buy some stock in Seattle, want to buy some stock, obviously, in Washington and Indianapolis, I think those three teams are getting better. Next year, those are going to be some really you good teams. you got some, teams. some uh, Seattle colors on you. Just a little bit. But in yeah, this game, yeah. road game, Washington, basically, last Sunday night was the first round of the playoffs for Washington. They move on. They've won nine straight. I think they're going to make it 10 at home. Seattle coming in, great defense. Wait, the Redskins have won nine straight They won straight nine games? straight to get in. They were ah. three and six at one point, or something like that. I think that it's would nine be seven straight. straight. Seven, I don't know how many. That's what I thought it was, seven straight. But they won seven straight, which is still unbelievably impressive. They, I think they're going to win again, make that eight straight at this point. Run the rock with Alfred Morris. Can't run it with RG3. Knees hurting him a little bit. Definitely he's lost a little bit of a, a little bit of his burst. Some people think he's gonna get that back in a week. He's probably not. He's gonna be the same guy we saw last Sunday. Have him throw the ball effectively off play action pass passes. 
keep Seattle's defense on the on the field, tire them out, because that's probably the strength of their defense. Have both their big corners back, so RG three is going to have to make some good throws. What's the deal with Richard Sherman? Didn't the guy get suspended got when he fielded it? Got off because of uh, the same thing as Braun. Oh, they messed Bron- up the sample, yeah, but he really like didn't take the, the drug. Okay. May or may not have. Who knows? But I, I like Washington in this one at home. This will be the best game of the weekend. Close, close, close game. Back and forth. I think Russell Wilson's going to play great. I think RG3 is going to play great. I think Alfred Morris is going to play great. I think Marshawn Lynch is going to play great. Really tight game. Going to go 24 21. Washington wins the game. Fun fact for you, I picked all the home teams. That probably won't happen. I don't think it's, it's happened in a while. I thought it was two and two. Two and two. Kid goes two home, two road. I like to keep it even. I like the matchups this week. Okay, okay. Cool. Next topic, Tom. Okay, so Seth Blatter came out. He had an interview with Al Jazeera, the Arabian Sports Network or something. They asked him about how you can improve soccer in America. What does he think about MLS? He gave a short 50-second snippet answer. He doesn't like what's going on in the U.S. How can MLS improve, Jared? They need to get rid of the playoffs. They need to get rid of the conferences, divisions, all that stuff. Get rid of it. Go to the table like every other league goes to. Round-robin format. You play each team home and away throughout the season. Uh, three points for a win, one point for a draw, nothing for a loss. Top of the table at the end of the year wins. That makes every game important. Makes every game interesting. That's what makes the EPL so great. How you get a great final game like that, man. Like that entire yeah. But that's once every like thirty years that things happen. The the games still matter though throughout the year. Right now, regular season doesn't really matter because the 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 highest the best record in the MLS hasn't won the MLS Cup in I don't even know how long. Hasn't done it yet. So I think you you go to the table. You need more. There's already a good amount of soccer-specific stadiums, which is good. Keep increasing those as you go along. And eventually, as he mentioned, you want to get the schedule where they're not playing MLS MLS games on big international dates because those games are getting zero views. Yep. You want to move it to where you're not playing on those FIFA dates. And that will attract more aging kind of superstar players like the Robbie Keens and David Beckhams of the world to come and finish their career in the MLS. Yeah, I, I like where your head's at on that. MLS, what I like, is, what I would like to see, is the switch to start in September and in May kind yep, of deal. Yep. It's tough because there's a few teams with NFL stadiums like the Revolution. Yep. Revolution are probably one of the worst franchises in MLS. Yep. They don't have a soccer specific stadium. And I doubt don't have a good fan I, I don't, No, no, because Kraft like owns the team and just wants to keep them there at yep. Foxborough. They want the team in Boston or even Providence. Why don't we try to get them at Rick? That would be don't sweet. Don't let the stadium is on the Rick campus. That would be sweet. We already know that San Jose Earthquakes play yep. at the University of Santa Clara, not even in San Jose. Yep. Anyways, uh, I like where your head's at, though, and the, the table is one of the things that I think really needs to improve. Everyone home and home. There's 20 teams in the league about, or there's going to be 20 or yep. something like that. So you have 38 games, everyone home once, everyone on the road once. That means you're looking forward to teams coming in, not like your conference teams that you see all the time. So you get one home, one road. You're not even playing the teams in the Western Conference now like twice. It's just yep. like one game. It's like, yep. all right, this is stupid. The playoff system is awful in the MLS. Yeah, you just get but this is American sports, so they need playoffs. So this, I don't even know how we can improve the playoff just system. It's just got to, yeah, you got to get just rid of it. Stable it. I mean, I like where the MLS's head was at, given the host city, the, the higher seed, the host city in the final. But, I mean, there really shouldn't be a final, like you said. Yeah. It should just be a table. Just set it up just like every other league in the world. I mean... The attendance right now in MLS is pretty it's decent. Pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's been, been going increasing. up. It's between eighteen and 19,000 now, which is actually seventh in the world. Would you believe yeah, that? Yeah, I would not. That's the seventh I'm... highest attendance, average attendance in the world. I can't believe it either. So soccer seems to be going pretty good. I mean, MLS is not a bad league. I mean, it only started in 1996. Yeah. Everyone who's on the United States national team played in MLS at some point in their lives. Yep. So it's producing players, producing talent. Guys want to come here now. Well, not play. every guy on the U.S. national team. Pretty much every guy. You got well. We got a bunch of those German guys who've never played. Well, that's before. because they're sort of German, you know. Yeah. Well, they're Americans born on German Air Force Base. Yeah, whatever. stuff like that. But everyone else pretty yeah. much starts in yeah. MLS. I mean, it's bre- it's it's bred coaches. Which you can argue is prob. It, uh, is that a good thing? Is that not a good thing? Should we have more guys skipping college and trying and going for trials when they're seventeen and eighteen? Overseas, maybe that's the way that you make the U.S. Bottom line is, better, bottom but. line is, there's talent to be had that's yeah. in MLS, and plus now you got guys coming here, superstars. Beckham's out now, but he made a lasting impact in MLS. Thierry Henry, uh, uh, Rafa Marquez, Tim Cahill, all those guys play for New York Red Bull. Yeah. 
the designated player for the New England Revolution, I can't even name him. Yeah. Benny Philheimer is an American, maybe, but whatever. Really, there's, there's plenty of things that MLS yeah, can do. Twelman is now the color commentator for the U.S. men's well, let's just, team alongside Ian Dark. Let's just call. Let's just call what it is. The I MLS mean. is never going to break, or I don't want to say never, but it's going to be a long time before the MLS gets close. They to the need. Big four. They need the. If anything, September to May they would, need, they would need the NHL to continue to be idiots and having lockouts every four years so they could maybe catch ground on them. Other than that, I don't think it will happen. Well, soccer television ratings in the United States, they're, not they're, ratings, but the bids are just out of the, through the roof. But you got next year, NBC's making it seem like you're getting a lot of, you're going to get so much EPL coverage next year. You're going to get a lot of people when they want to watch soccer, they're going to watch the EPL and say, this is a little more, this is better higher quality than the MLS. I'll just watch the EPL. I don't need... I mean, and, and that's another question. Like, do do we need the MLS? We can just watch with... In, today, in today's cable, you know, multiple channels... Yeah, but you multiple can't go channels, to the EPL. You get your EPL games. And do you, I mean... It's yeah, you like, can't does, go there. you got to does, does England need football if they can just watch the NFL? Do we need soccer if we can just watch the EPL? You know, it's kind of that... Well, we, we're trying to have a good... Soccer team in the United States, England, I'm sure, doesn't care about having a good yeah. well, professional. Uh, there are other ways American football national team. There's good national, good national teams that play basketball. That most of their players come to the NBA. They yeah. have a domestic league that no one talks about. Yeah. Oh, all the all so, the all the Americans storm those leagues. Every guy in so, college well, yeah. will be uh, will be doing that stuff. So we can just do that. Every I mean, every. That. Guy. I mean, that's a debate to be had. Fun fact, fun fact for you, former Providence College. PC is just storming the world right now. World stormers right here. Let me give you a little fun fact. Marcus Dowhit, pick of the LA Lakers in like 56 overall in like the 2004 NBA draft. He's now playing in the Philippines and he's on the Filipino national team. How's that? That's Jonathan Kelly, former Providence College guy. National team of the Ivory Coast, Jeff Xavier, Cape Verde national team. There's more guys that are on these national teams. That's great. Name. Next topic. Tukakoti, Finland. All right, so we, we're we filming Wednesday, national championship game, Monday, January 7th, in the Orange Bowl, Notre Dame, Alabama. Break it down. Who you got? What do you think about this game? Well, the spread right now, as far as I know, stands to be Alabama by nine. And if Sounds that's the case, right. I'm taking Notre Dame. Against with, the spread? With, with the, the spread. No, Notre Dame minus yeah. nine, or whatever, plus nine, whatever you, whatever you do. But you have them winning outright. And I also have them winning outright. And I'll tell you why. Unbelievable. Notre Dame has had a magical season. I went to a game in South Bend, and they looked awful. And I was like, this team blows. But they've come back, led by Monte Teo, led by Everett Golson, led by Brian Kelly. Comes out, puts an undefeated season together. With a tough schedule, winning some nail biters. Oh, yeah, USC with Max Widek, who couldn't even beat Georgia Tech. Tough game. Very tough. It was at... The Coliseum tough game. with about 90,000 Georgia USC Tech fans. got blown out by Georgia. This is the case here. Oh, They're going game. down to Miami. They're playing Alabama. Alabama has a great defense. Notre Dame has a great defense. Alabama's offense, pretty decent. Notre Dame's offense, not as good. But the ND defense is going to shut down this Alabama offense, and the Notre Dame offense is going to benefit from turnovers forced by the Notre Dame defense. So it's going to be Irish with short field position every time, scoring... Scoring a couple touchdowns and a couple field goals here and there. They're going to win the game 23-20. Last second field goal for Notre Dame. And a plus, Everett Golson is going to have a, a, a solid day because Notre Dame, or excuse me, because Alabama's quarterback, or quarterback, when they play quarterbacks like Everett Golson, a.k.a. Johnny Manziel. You can't even compare those two. Guy can sling so it. People need to stop So can Golson. That. People need to stop. Manziel can run. Too. So can Golson. It's going to be a tough day for these guys. Now let's I'm going Notre Dame 23-20. Already said it. So we game. got we got the Notre Dame prediction. There to me, it doesn't seem possible for me in any scenario that Notre Dame wins this game. I I, I can picture scenarios where they keep it close. I can p- picture scenarios where they get blown out. None of those scenarios. Notre Dame wins the football game. <laughs> Why? LSU's defense last year better than this Notre Dame defense by far and away. Or, at the very least, as good. Alabama, worse offense last year, dropped 21 points on that LSU defense. This is an SEC team that gets beat up week in, week out. They get over a 
month, they get about a month to rest. They're going to be fresh, ready to go, healthy, the freshest they've been since, the, since week one. Notre Dame's been off for a little longer, about a week longer than Alabama has. So they'll doesn't be rested matter. as well. Doesn't matter but for them, that doesn't matter because they get games like BC and Wake Forest and USC with Max Widek at quarterback. Those are basically bye weeks. Nah, you so still Alabama, gotta travel. You still gotta travel. You still regardless, gotta play, you, regardless, you, get, you, still you didn't have to game. travel for Wake Forest. No, and you had to travel to USC to play a backup quarterback. But Monte Taylor's parents had to travel Georgia to Tech. Hawaii. Good thing they're not playing in this game. True. Anyway, Alabama's gonna come out. Everyone's talking about Notre Dame's front seven, which is very good. I'll give Notre Dame front seven a lot of credit. Stepping to it, Louis Nix, those guys can play. But there's five, five NFL starters on this Alabama Alabama offensive line. They're going to pound the rock. Eddie Lacy, TJ Yeldon, both of those two guys will be starters in the end. Well, Lacy will probably be like a third down back, split back kind of guy. Yeldon, superstar in the NFL in a couple years. Amari Cooper on the outside. There's no one on Notre Dame, in Notre Dame secondary who can stay with that kid. So you're going to get the rock pounded up the middle, up the gut, up the gut, play action pass. Amari Cooper over the top, touchdown. Notre Dame's offense is going to look this, – this Notre Dame offense looked awful – Awful in just about every game. Just about every game. That Wake Forest, Michigan State. Wake Forest, they killed. Michigan State. Michigan they looked awful. Killed. Michigan. They looked awful in that game. They scored like 17 points. Na- Navy, they put Purdue, up 51 points. Purdue, offense, looked terrible. There were a lot of games where this noted. BYU, awful. Stanford, offense was awful. They awful against those people. It's not, not going to be won by the offense. It's going to be won by the defense. defense they're they're going to have to score. They're going to have to score at the very least. 24 points, they won't even get close to that. One, they'll be lucky to score a touchdown in this football game. I can I guarantee you that. Two Everett touchdowns and three field goals. Everett Golson, all of a sudden, people are calling him Johnny Football. Not even close, or he would have gotten a Heisman vote or anything of that nature. Kid is nowhere near the skill set that Manziel has. I'll give it. He doesn't hold the laces when he throws the ball. Who cares? He's going to throw, like, th- I don't know how many picks he'll throw. But I, I, he, won't have a, he won't have the game. He doesn't have the dynamic play na- playmaking ability that Manziel has. No way Notre Dame wins so this game. So, what's the score? I'm going, I'll go 24, 24 to 9. 24-9-er. 24-9. Nick Saban wins another national title. Alabama, as we is all know. Is he going to smile if they gave it back this time? Or is he going to be He happy? probably shouldn't because this is, I think in his mind, this is a fo- almost a foregone conclusion. Buddy, you got to calm down. Alabama's not that good. Notre Dame's good. Notre Dame is good. You're making it seem like Notre Dame's like 8-4. and four, And like Alabama's like 25-0. and 0. Notre Dame, all right, Notre Dame beat BYU, they beat Wake Forest, they beat BC. They should have lost to Stanford. Every time I watch that goal line plunge, that's a touchdown. I don't know how that wasn't called a touchdown. I'm pretty sure Alabama, to I'm pretty sure Alabama played like Western Kentucky, who they should be yeah, they, destroying. They played, they, lost, they played lots of Texas A&M, they played LSU, they played some great SEC teams this year. Tougher than any team Notre Dame played. Notre Dame's schedule, you, you got to give it to them. They scheduled tough Oklahoma, this year. that's their toughest game. Stanford just won the Rose Bowl yesterday. They, they should have lost that game. That, that's a loss in my mind. That's like Green Bay, Seattle, really oh, so a loss. So we're getting into this game. It's when, really when a loss. When teams actually win, you, you don't it's count. It's really a loss. I, I say they any win's Oregon a good win. That's my play, idea. That, two weeks ago, anybody who has No, any, win, any ugly win except when they get the call wrong at the goal line in a, on a scoring play that would have cost you the game. In my opinion, uh, We're talking won, different games here. Lost. You're talking Stanford, Wisconsin. I'm talking I'm talking about Notre Dame, Stanford. No, that's not, what I'm, no, I'm, I'm talking Stanford... Wisconsin. You're talking Notre Dame, Stanford. We, we're way past Notre Dame. Stanford. Notre Dame didn't play Wisconsin. Yeah, I'm talking Stanford, Wisconsin from yesterday. Stanford won the game, and you're not giving them any credit. No, Stanford is a pretty good team, and they beat. In my opinion, they beat Notre Dame at home I on the road. I don't, I, don't, I don't see it. Notre Dame is no good. So they scheduled a and good. Then, they scheduled on, a good season. Hold on. Let's not. Let's not. A good slate of let's games. Let's not crown Stanford because they beat Wisconsin, who was they beat Oregon five, in Oregon, who was eight and five. Eight and five Wisconsin team. Let's not crown Stanford. Good They're team. They're the Rose Bowl champions. They won it fair and square. Good team. Good Pac program. ten versus Let's Big not ten. crown them anything. Let's not crown. They beat an eight and five football team that it shouldn't it even have been in the Big Ten championship game because they finished third behind Penn State. They won. And Ohio they State. won it. They didn't let's break not, any rules. Let's not give they, them too much credit. They were the Big credit. Ten champions. They didn't break any rules. Let's not give them too much credit for a for a narrow win over a bad Big Ten team. Finished 23-20, Notre Dame. If Notre Dame scored 23 points, I don't think I will return how, to school. How many times have I been right on my college football predictions and you've been just 23 dead 23 points? No, won't even come close to 23 points. Won't happen. 
I'm just saying that I'm always right with my college football predictions, and you're you've not got like as right, right. right. You've got like two right. And you've got like one right. Oh, so you got one more than me. One yeah, of your, one I'll, of your I'll, picks. I'll, one of your. I don't even. All right, one here's of one of my really picks: count. Florida State over NC State, and That's then one. Notre Dame over USC. And you said nowhere on earth will Notre Dame beat USC. With a bit. All right, backup quarterback. Well, gotta kind of keep those things in your mind. When we when we filmed that wasn't that in hadn't <laughs> even come out yet. I was still picking. Well, I was picking Notre Dame with their starting quarterback, so I was right. Let's go back to the because we definitely have some elite eights on record. We won't obviously we won't have this on air, but there was probably like five out of ten that I crushed you. An elite uh, eight? Yeah. All right. Oh yeah, killed you in a row. All right, so. Whatever. Whatever. All right. So if now we want to go to if we want to go all the way back to predictions, we can go all the way back. Okay. Okay. And we'll let the record Warehouse. show. Warehouse. Warehouse. Notre Dame's gonna win the game. All right. Ne- last topic of the night. Favorite all-time sports celebration. This topic came to us because Stephen Ridley does the do do boom celebration. Which looks, it looks awful. It looks pretty it awesome. Cool. It looks pretty awesome. So, Jared, you want me to go first? Because I got, I got five celebrations I need to throw out there because they're just, there's too many. Too many great ones. You got five celebrations. I got, I got five. You want me to break them yeah, down? Yeah, go ahead. Number five, Dikembe Mutombo. No, 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 no. Okay. After a stuff, because you know what's great about it is he does it while well, the ball is still in play. <laughs> he just stops yep. himself and goes, no, 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 while well, the game's still going on. Yep. Great. Sticking with the same sport here for number four, the Walker Wiggle. Okay. Going back to my little, uh, a little bit when I was like 10 years old, Walker Wiggle. I'm going to go three right here. I'm going to go across the pond. Now to England to Iceland. Okay. Looking at Stargin, Stargin FC, the Iceland soccer team. Have you heard of these guys? Yes, I think so. They're great. They're great, great YouTube compilation yep. of these guys' celebrations. The bicycle is my favorite. When they got four guys doing a bicycle. Yep, yep. That's my favorite. They also do... The, uh, the gone the fish, fishing, the, fish is the gone fishing is great. Yeah, the, fish. the, uh, the row, the, the childbirth when they the guy yeah. scores. Have you ever takes, tried doing the fish, the flop thing that they, that guy is doing it? The guy does it great. It's so hard. The guy is so that. spot on with his with his. It's, real that's, it's really good. The the giving birth is great. The guy scores a goal, takes a yeah. soccer ball from a kid, team gathers around him, sticks the soccer ball under his jersey, team gathers around, everyone is there. One guy takes out the ball, holds it up to the crowd like it's the Lion King, really. Yeah. Uh, so this is great celebrations today. Number two, if you play FIFA World Cup 2010 by EA Sports, any celebration after a goal, the violin, yeah. the, uh, the you get the guns going, yeah. the backflip, the arms in the air, anything that you do, just press a button. What's your favorite from FIFA World Cup 2010? I know you got some. Probably the golf swing. Run to the corner flag, golf swing it. I've never done that. Yeah, you got it. It's uh-huh. right. Right left on the uh, right left on the right stick. All right left. I gotta get my FIFA 2010 World Cup working again. Number one celebration of all time in sports: the Gronk Foggy London Town celebration. His spikes are just great in general, but this one, you know what? We don't even need to describe how yeah. great it was. It was in London. I, I went across the pond again. Yeah, I think the the Gronk Foggy London Town spike was probably the best NFL celebration this year by far. I, I think it will stand uh, at that point. Uh, celebration wise. Uh, I like to, I, I'm more of a muted celebration guy, act like you've been there before, uh, so, you know, something simple, I like simple, I liked LaDainian Tomlinson's teacup just flip, and it usually ended up just going right back to the ref, that one saw it, I like Arian Foster's bow, I like simple, muted, you're not going over the top, not going to pick up a 15 yard penalty in the NFL, solid, simple celebration. If I was an opponent of Stargin FC, I'd probably want to punched all the guys in the face. Oh, absolutely. I don't know how they haven't gotten a but fight with But when people. I say muted celebrations, I would like the NFL to get rid of the stupid excessive celebration penalties because they are en- entertaining to watch when these when these people have great celebrations like that. Like, every soccer player ever would get flagged if this was America for excessive celebration. Who cares? These are grown men. They can handle it if a guy's celebrating in their face. Remember Josie Altidore got... A yellow card at the Confederations Cup because he took off his jersey. Can't take your sh- that's the only thing. Can't take your shirt off. How about, this is another great one. Vancouver Whitecaps versus New England Revolution 2011. So going back two years now. Yeah. Eric Hasley scores a goal, takes off his jersey, long sleeve jersey, takes off his jersey, short sleeve jersey underneath, got a yellow card. That's awesome. <laughs> is that great? That, that is, is a, good, that is a great underneath. celebration. It was great. My celebrations were better than yours. They probably were. I get into the celebrations. You, I guess you don't. I like them, but if I was going to celebrate, keep it simple. Act like I've been there before. A little bit of class. <laughs> act like you... Where have you said that before in PTR? Act like you've been there before. Oh, well, that's kind of my 
That's your mantra? Kind of one of my mantras, you know? All right. Well, don't ever get too excited. Before you get out of here, if you want to join the debate at home, yep. hashtag New Year, same Neds. Like, it's right up there. You can follow me on Twitter at Danny H. Harris. You can follow the warehouse on Twitter at TH3 Warehouse. So hit that up. New Year's, same Neds. Have a happy New Year, everyone. Before we go, we've got to say thanks to Tom Lima for helping out with this production. What do you got? I guess we can say thanks to Nate Bissell for just sitting in here. He Nate Bissell? Bring, the, he didn't uh, walk in on us like he did a few episodes ago, so give him credit for that. But with that, tip your waiters. Go Irish! Oh, boy.